Well, good evening. We are so excited to have all of you here this evening. So my name is Kelly Lawton and I am GW's nursing career coach. And I have been working with GW nursing students and nursing recruiters for the past seven years. And we are delighted to be able to, for the first time, provide this unique panel opportunity in a virtual format. So we are um, very excited about that. And no matter if it is in person or virtual, this is really your time students to get your questions answered about a variety of nursing um, new grad opportunities to learn about the application process and really get the insider's perspective from nursing recruiters about what makes you stand out as a candidate. So I am joined this evening by 10 nursing recruiters from across the DMV area, and I will have each of them introduce themselves momentarily, but I just wanted to highlight a few housekeeping um, items just to get us started. So first of all, students feel free to put on your cameras. I know both myself and the recruiters would love to see faces. Um, however, we certainly understand if your bandwidth does not allow that, no problem. Uh, second, we, um, we will, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit more information about the flow of this evening. So basically I have a, a little over one hour uh, panel presentation. If you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to raise your hand or put your question in the chat and we will make sure to address it. Um, also, it, I will be sending out a follow-up email afterwards with everyone's contact information. Each of the recruiters have been generous enough to provide their contact information as well as a few additional details about their new grad opportunities. So I will be following up with everyone about that. Uh, following the panel discussion and the Q&A, we will have about 15 minutes of breakout rooms where each of the different hospitals represented here will have a breakout room where you will be able to um, move freely through the different breakout rooms so that you can connect with each of the individual hospitals that you're interested in speaking with and get your individual questions answered. And finally, um, I just wanted to give you a few details about myself. So I am your nursing career coach. I am happy to schedule a meeting with you to meet over the phone or via WebEx. I will provide uh, my email address as well as handshake information in the chat. I also am having a job search group that starts tomorrow morning at 830. So if you have follow up questions from this evening's panel presentation, I invite you uh, to join me tomorrow morning um, to get any additional questions answered that you have. So at this time, I want to turn it over to our nursing recruiters and have each of them introduce themselves. So within this introduction, we would love to hear your name, the hospital you represent, and one thing that sets your hospital's new grad nursing residency apart. And we will go ahead and start with uh, Kim at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay, excellent. So my name is Kim Sinkford um, and I work at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. I started off as a new grad there and can't believe I've been there for almost 20 years in a variety of different roles. Um, in recruitment for the last five years. I think our residency sort of speaks for itself. We're a level one trauma um, bed hospital, over 926 beds. Um, and we you know, take care of all patients from all walks of life and all um, clinical acuity with the exception of um, pediatrics. Um, our residency is a year long program through Vizient. Um, and so it's a very um, prescribed program from a week to week um, level of expectation of how you're doing, how things are coming along, working very closely with the leadership teams, as well as um, the nurse educators for the different cohorts, whether it be uh, the ICUs, uh, the med surge areas, our MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute, our periop areas, we really hire into everything. So I'm glad to be here and I hope that you all have lots of questions for me. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, let's hear from Adventist. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mary Jane with Adventist Healthcare. Um, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, so Adventist Healthcare, we are a faith-based organization. We're located um, 
in several different areas around the DMV. We have Shady Grove Medical Center. Uh, we have our new White Oak Medical Center. And then if you go around the south side of the Beltway, we have um, Fort Washington Medical Center. So it's a, a small hospital. Um, we have potential of growing that, so that's exciting. And then we also are in management agreement with Howard University Hospital. So our nurse residency program um, also follows the Visient um, program. I think you'll hear that probably across the board tonight that most hospitals in the area follow the Visient curriculum. Uh, so we are also one year as well. One thing that does set us apart, our preceptorships are actually some of the longest ones that you will find throughout the whole um, different units. So I can talk about that um, later as well. But anyways, um, welcome and thank you for joining tonight. Thank you so much. Um, let's hear from Suburban Hospital. Hey. Uh... Thank you for having me and uh, welcome guys. My name is uh, David Guyon. I'm the uh, nurse recruiter at Suburban Hospital, um, part of Johns Hopkins Medicine. We are located uh, just around uh, the Virginia line from you guys over on the Maryland side in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, I'd say the one thing that sets us apart, uh, our residency program is, uh, I guess, just the size. You know, being a community hospital, um, we don't hire as many new grads. So, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to that, just like anything else. But uh, one of the big pros um, is, you know, you're not one of 50 or 60 or any big numbers. You know, we really keep our cohorts to about 10. So, um, you know, so the ratios are really good. The educators get to know you day one. Um, you know, the directors will really get to pay attention to you. So you're really going to get that hands-on training that uh, I'm assuming, you know, a lot of people are looking for. So look forward to uh, talking to you guys more as, as the day goes on. Thank you, David. Um, how about Stephanie from GW Hospital? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie. Um, I'm the new grad recruiter at the George Washington uh, University Hospital in Foggy Bottom. Um, we recruit everything from um, critical care, uh, med surge, and women's services. Um, and one thing I think that sets us apart is that um, we are a teaching hospital level one trauma center. Um, we work a lot with the university over at QW. Um, and I think that uh, we have a lot of support from our preceptors and our leadership uh, to really uh, grow our um, new grads. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, how about Carla with Children's National? Hi, hello to everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. My name is Carla from Children's National. Um, Freestanding uh, Pediatric Hospital, what sets us apart is our homegrown um, nurse residency program, which we call Transition to Practice Program. And it's been uh, credentialed, of course, with distinction. Um, we recently celebrated our third magnet um, designation. So something that we're quite proud of and um, looking forward to, you know, talking to you more and letting you know, you know, what the process is and uh, more about the programs and the units that are hiring. Thank you, Carla. Um, Anova, Kathy and Casey. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Russell Babin. I'm actually not a nurse recruiter, so I brought the nurse recruiter with me, Casey Harrington. Um, but I'm the vice president for nursing professional practice. And as such, I oversee the orientation, education, simulation, evidence-based practice and research and all, all those fun things and a few more. Um, but uh, I, I come because I am very invested in our new grads. No, Innova is a very um, avid recruiter of new grads. Um, we have hired over 1,100 new grads in the last two years for our five hospitals. Our five hospitals are Innova Alexandria, which is a Pathways to Excellence hospital, Innova Fairfax, which is a magnet hospital, Innova Fair Oaks, which is a magnet hospital. Innova Mount Vernon, which is going to submit magnet documents in August. And Innova Loudon, which just had their fourth site visit this week for magnet. So they are magnet designated and waiting to be fourth again. So um, we're very, very proud of them. Um, when I think about our program, aside from it, from the fact that, that we are very skilled in it at this point with the number of people that we have involved. We have um, 
a, a role that is, is not always that common. It's called a clinical mentor. And these are bachelor prepared nurses that guide the, the uh, new grads uh, throughout their entire first year. Um, and they are uh, designed specifically to ensure that, that the experience is the best it can be, that they're getting the best opportunities for education and development that's possible. And they follow and track with you on a regular basis what that um, that progress is all about. So I think it's a wonderful um, role and, I, and that is probably what sets us apart, but I have a lot more to share. So I hope you'll come see us. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so can we hear from Tiffany with HCA? Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany. I'm the lead nurse residency recruiter for HCA's capital division, which spans across 18 different hospitals here on the East Coast. Um, but here in Virginia, we have 14 hospitals. Our three Northern Virginia hospitals are gonna be Reston Hospital Center, Stone Springs Hospital Center in Dallas, and then our freestanding psych hospital is Dominion Hospital. Um, our nurse residency is full-time paid year-long nurse residency. It's very specific to the specialty and unit you're getting hired into. Um, and it's, you, you do have that mentor your whole, your whole first year. Um, one thing that sets us apart, I think, is that we are a part of the HCA healthcare system, HCA's nationwide, um, one of the largest and leading healthcare organizations across the nation. But the cool thing about our hospitals is, is that they are a little bit smaller. So you're getting the both of best, the best of both worlds, being a part of a very, very team oriented family culture at our smaller facilities um, where, where you know your team, you know your CNO, you know your nurse director, you're very supported, but then you have this very large organization that you're a part of as well to back you up in regards to job security and benefits and resources and opportunities to grow and develop. So I'm looking forward to talking to you all more. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Uh, can we hear from Virginia Hospital Center? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Um, I am happy to be here, very excited. My name is Marta Freiler. I am the lead nurse recruiter with Virginia Hospital Center. We are a magnet recognized facility located right in the heart of Arlington, um, not too far from Boston, if you're familiar with that, but we're also not too far from DC either. Um, we are in partnership with the Mayo Clinic. Um, you might have heard that advertised um, somewhere along the way. And we actually have our certification visit next week um, to become level two trauma certified. So we are joining those ranks here, hopefully very soon. Um, I think that uh, one of the things that sets us uh, um, apart from, you know, in terms of our residency program, we do also utilize the Visient program. Um, but I think what sets us apart is that we are, another you know community hospital and so you have a little bit more of an individualized more personalized experience taking part in our program um and so i think that you know aside from that also the growth opportunities that we provide here we definitely like to grow our nurses from within so we work very closely with the nurses in providing those opportunities to them Thank you so much, Marta. Uh, can we hear from Kelly with UCA? Uh, Hi, everybody. Uh, Kelly Riley. Uh, I'm the only Clin 1 recruiter here at UVA Health, and we are an academic healthcare center affiliated with the University of Virginia, and we are a level one trauma designated hospital. We are magnet, magnet designated as well. We have a, um, the main hospital, children's hospital, clinic network, school of medicine, school of nursing, health sciences library. Um, you know, obviously as an academic medical center, we're um, always trying to find ways to learn and grow. Uh, we do a ton of medical research and we um, have been voted the number one hospital in Virginia by a US News and World Report. I think this is our fourth year in a row, so that's exciting. And then the other thing, that's us that's a part, obviously, is our great view of the mountains, um, conveniently located just a couple hours from the beach and from DC. So we kind of have the best of every aspect. Um, and, you know, we have a great, um, a great uh, 
environment within the, the hospital. Um, we are certainly um, still a small town sort of feel though. So um, we do hire about 150 new grads every summer, um, but we um, really try our best to make sure that you're really getting that personalized attention throughout your, your long residency program as well. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. And finally, uh, Annie with MedStar Georgetown. Thank you so much for having me and congratulations to you all. You're almost done with your nursing degree, which is so exciting. My name is Annie Parker. I'm the director of nurse recruitment at MedStar Georgetown. You have so many good choices here tonight, so you really can't make a bad one. Um, we also use the Vizient Nurse Residency Program. Um, we're also an academic medical center, but definitely the thing we're most proud of is our magnet status. We're actually four times designated working on our fifth, and there are fewer than 100 hospitals in the country with that many magnets. So I really think it speaks to how exceptional our environment is for new nurses and the professional development opportunities, support, and just the strong voice of nursing within our facility. So hopefully you'll consider us for your next nursing career. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. So now that we have heard from all of our nurse recruiters this evening, um, now we're gonna talk more specifically about the entry-level RN roles at each of these individual uh, hospitals and healthcare systems. So really what we want to hear from each of the hospitals is a bit more about the nuts and bolts of your either nurse residency program and or whatever you call that. Um, new grad nursing opportunity, uh, what units are you hiring for, what is the application process like, and then finally, how do stu students le learn more? Are you having your own individual events? Is there a website or a certain place that you would point students? So any additional information. And so to make it easy, we're going to kind of go right down the line in the order we went down before. So we will start with um, MedStar Washington Hospital Center. again. <laughs> um, so let's see here. I can talk a little bit about our RN residency program. Um, the, the big program for us starts in July. Um, that's where we onboard uh, primarily our new to practice nurses. Um, our second biggest program actually starts on Monday, February 22nd, sort of to coincide with the December graduates. So for the folks that are graduating in May, um, we do have open applications. So now is certainly the time to put your application in if you are interested in MedStar Washington Hospital Center. It would be mwhc.jobs um, and you would apply to the RN residency program. Once you've applied to the RN residency program and attached your cover as well as your resume, uh, there are three nurse recruiters that will review um, applications um, and will respond back to you with a, sort of a nurse application query. And that's where we obtain a little bit more information as far as what your GPA is, um, two areas of interest that you're primarily interested in. Um, and then once we receive that information, um, we really, really try our best to send uh, your application and your resume to those desired areas. The nursing director looks back at that, lets us know how best to proceed, and then we'll uh, move forward with, at this point in time, a virtual interview. Um, unfortunately, with COVID as it is, we are not doing shadow opportunities, um, but we are doing uh, virtual interviews um, with the nursing director, as well as with staff members participating, with HR sort of circling back around to let you know one way um, or another how best to proceed. So the um, residency program, as I mentioned before, is a 12-month program, um, certainly more robust during the first three to four months of orientation. So during that three to four months of orientation, you are working alongside of a preceptor. Um, that preceptor uh, has a calendar that you share as well, that you work with the nursing educators on. So week by week by week, um, you'll have sort of a set level of expectations so that you know how you're doing each step of the way, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities that you haven't had the opportunity to sort of um, complete or take care of, um, how you're coming along with your documentation, your medication management, your communication with the collaborative team, um, your patient interaction. So. The ratios tend to be on the day shift, one to four, um, on the med surge and the cardiac units. 
um, and tend to be one to one, one to two, maybe one to three in the critical areas, uh, but tends to be more one to one. We are a very acute environment with a very high case mix index. Um, right now we do hire into all of our critical care areas, which would be our burn trauma, um, our CVICU, our CCU, um, our MICU, our SICU, and then we have multiple IMCs as well. And then we have a very um, strong MedStar Heart and Vascular program, which is um, also affiliated with the Cleveland Clinic. So lots of research sharing goes along there. So whether that be our advanced heart failure, um, our um, medical cardiac medical cardiology IMC environment, our cardiac surgery environment, um, our vascular thoracic environment, sort of opportunities um, for whatever you're interested in for sure. Um, the residency program after you get off of orientation will continue on. You'll be meeting once a month with your cohort or sort of the group that's carved out of the specialty area that you're involved in. And you'll be working towards an evidence-based project that you have determined um, that the hospital could benefit from. Whether it's a safety issue, a quality issue, a patient engagement or satisfaction issue, you guys will determine that and work very closely with um, fellow residents um, along with the educator, um, working towards the completion of that evidence-based project project, um, and then it will be celebrated upon your year um, of completion of the residency program. So it's amazing how fast a year goes by. Lots of information um, goes throughout all of that. Certainly during in the orientation, you have the opportunity to learn sort of the bells and whistles in the first couple of weeks with um, different technology that we have, comfort levels with our EMR, any of our um, wound vacs or pumps, or if you're in an LVAD environment or any sort of specialty area, you have that sort of hands-on uh, relationship with the patient as well as in our clinical simulation lab. So you're never... Um, you're never sort of put out there to the wolves. There's always an immense amount of support, whether it's days, evenings, nights, or weekends. There's constantly uh, nursing leadership available to you. Mm, it's always tough being the first one to go, so I'm probably missing a couple of things. So happy to uh, chat with anybody at the end. Um, and I've also provided my email for follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. That was perfect. And I do think you covered everything. Um, let's hear from Adventist and Mary Jane. All right. Thank you. Um, so Adventist Healthcare, we offer two um, nurse resident cohorts a year, a summer and a winter. So we actually just started our winter cohort this last week. And that's for those that graduate in December. Um, and then those, for those of you that graduate in May, um, the next summer cohort will start in August, either the first or second week in August. Um, and those applications are now open and available. Um, so please go to our website at AdventistHealthCare.com. You can click on careers and then go for the nurse residency program. It is a general application. Um, we don't do it by unit specifics. It's just one general application and then once you have applied then we um, um, talk with you and then we did then we figure out what unit to go to from there so um, with our different hospitals um, Shady Grove Medical Center we have a level three NICU and I will just encourage anybody that is interested in anything inside of women's services apply very quickly um, women's services is probably one of the most competitive um, specialties that we have, and it is always the first to fill. Um, that may be very true for all the other hospitals as well, I don't know, but it is for us. So the labor delivery, mother baby, and then the NICU in, in all of our different hospitals. So um, we have, um, at White Oak, we have a cardiovascular ICU. Um, we do open heart surgeries there. Um, the IMCUs, um, we have those across the board. Um, multiple med surges we take into OR. And one specialty that we have that um, is unique to Adventist Healthcare is we do um, residency program in behavioral health. So it's actually a time to um, learn about behavioral health and do your full residency right there. So it's kind of um, an exciting opportunity with that. Um, as far as, let's see, I forget what else I was supposed to talk about. Um, the, the length of our preceptorships those go, um, depending on what type of unit you go in, um, our med surges will go anywhere from 16 to 18 weeks. Um, 
Our CV step downs, IMCUs, will take them from 20 to 22 weeks. Um, labor and delivery, NICU, ICU, emergency department, and be behavioral health will take those up close to um, 26 weeks. And then OR will, is our longest at 36 weeks. And the reason I give a little bit of a range with that. One thing we know is that due to COVID, a lot of clinical um, opportunities have been um, decreased. And so we want to individualize that preceptorship for you to make sure that you get um, whatever clinical experience that you need. So you definitely are paired with a preceptor during that whole period of time. For the nursing program, we do have a coordinator, educator, facilitator that oversee the program and they do those um, you know, weekly check-ins, monthly check-ins with you. Um, and then they are overseeing our general education classes that happen um, monthly throughout the full year. So thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to talk with you. Thank you so much, Mary Jane. Uh, let's hear from David uh, with Suburban Hospital. Hi again, guys. Um, well, I guess uh, for the nuts and bolts of the residency, um, I would just say ditto just for not boring you guys. Uh, we have the exact same program. So um, it runs very similar, you know, when you're meeting, uh, you know, off the unit and then you do evidence-based projects and then everything is pretty similar. Um, again, our cohort's a little smaller. It's usually around 10 people, um, you know, but other than that, it's, it's going to be pretty similar. Um, as far as the units go, um, we don't have mother baby. Um, we all have a lot of criers at the house, so we don't allow them at the hospital. But other than that, um, we can get you pretty much anywhere you want to go. Um, we got some really good units with uh, people that really love teaching. So, uh, so you, you can kind of have your pick and cho uh, choice there. Um, if for whatever reason you love the hospital, but you just don't get the exact dream unit, um, we do have direct career paths to any kind of specialty that you'd like. And we also have uh, in procedural areas such as the OR, um, we generally don't start new grads there, but we do have an experienced RN internship uh, once to twice a year. Uh, you know, once you get out of orientation and out of your residency, uh, you know, you can just apply for that and, and get in some of the procedural areas that uh, may be a little tougher to get into to start off. So um, as far as the application process goes, um, we have our cohorts three times a year. Um, for May grads, it usually starts in August. Um, December would be, um, would be uh, yeah, March. And then uh, August, we usually start in November. So um, we have three cohorts, so you can have your chance. Uh, as far as the applications go, they're all gonna be by unit. They're just gonna say new grad residency dash, whatever the unit is. Um, and uh, you can find them just by going to either Suburban Hospitals direct career site, um, or it's all gonna link you back to the Hopkins healthcare system anyway. And then you just do drop downs uh, by which hospital you're interested in. Or if you just type new grad in, you'll get you know all the new grad opportunities from across the system. Um, so that would be us in, uh, at Sibley in DC, Howard County up in Columbia and uh, the main campuses up in Baltimore. So um, so that's how you learn more and, uh, and hopefully I'll uh, meet some of you guys here very soon. So Thank you, David. One quick question. Are, are your positions posted now or are they coming in the near future? Good question. Uh, they are coming in the near future. We uh, just filled some that are starting in March. Um, so you may still see one if there's one straggler left, um, but other than that, they're pretty much down for now. And then I like to get them up about uh, as soon as I can, but usually in a, like I said, a smaller hospital, it's a little harder to project because we don't always have openings in our units. So sometimes it'll be, but usually it'll be a good two months out in advance. You could, you could expect to see them. Thank you, David. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, let's hear from Stephanie with GW Hospital. Um, hey everyone. Um, so as far as our nurse residency program, um, I'll start off uh, kind of giving a little bit of rundown, but I also have our director of medical surgical on, um, on here with me as well, well Jerry Ursolino, so he can um, make any, if he wants to make any ads to what I have to say, he's welcome to jump in as well. Um, but as far as our program is concerned, um, our in in reality, our program is really two years. Um, you have your, uh, depending upon your unit that you um, are hired into, whether that's critical care, women's services, or med surge, um, your length of orientation will be a little bit different. Um, once you come off of your orientation, um, you'll have your, what we call your one year of, of residency. And then um, the second year is really about your professional growth. 
Um, so during your orientation, you'll be in classes, skill labs, and then on the unit with your preceptor. Um, and then once you come off of your orientation, you'll then be required to um, be in a class once a month. And then you'll also work on a evidence-based project um, with your unit. Uh, and then the second year, um, being that it is all about your professional growth, um, we will have opportunities for you to take workshops um, to be a charge nurse or a preceptor or a clinical supervisor. Um, and um, as far as like our application process is concerned, we hire new grads three times a year. We do a July class, an October class, and a March class. Um, the July class will be for the May 2021 grads. Um, we will most likely start um, hiring for that class at the end of March, beginning of April. Um, I will go ahead and post all the positions so you'll, um, so the way our application process works is you will uh, basically apply to any unit that uh, new, we have new grad spaces available for. It'll just say RN new grad July 2021 and then whatever the unit is. Um, you can just go and find our application on our website, which is at gwhospital.com slash careers. Um, and then once I see your application come through, you're welcome to apply just to one unit. You're welcome to apply to all new grad units, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I will then um, review your application, reach out to you within 24 to 48 hours. I try to give a quick turnaround. Um, and then I will ask for your, um, your transcript, your two letters of recommendation. Um, one needs to be from either a clinical instructor or professor, and then the other can be from a um, previous work supervisor. Um, and then I will have you complete a, um, a DNA, which is like an online uh, nursing assessment. Uh, and then at that point, I will also ask you for your top three choices. Um, so that I can, uh, when I review your application, I'll be able to determine, you know, what area um, still needs nurses for. Um, I will mention that our ICU and our critical care areas do get filled pretty quickly, um, as well as our women's services. So if those are units are interest to you, I would highly recommend um, have, you know, applying um, as early as possible. And then typically, um, I would say after the application process, um, we try to get an offer out within um, a two week turnaround time. Um, Jerry, do you have anything that you wanted to add to this as well? Uh, none, you said everything, but definitely I'm available during okay. the- uh, Yeah, and, Jer and Jerry um, definitely helps. Um, if anyone has, um, is, if anybody is still kind of on the fence as to where they would like to work, Jerry is always open to speaking with new grads and trying to help figure out, you know, they're the best fit for them too. Yeah, we're here together in your journey. So definitely your success is our success. I always give my cell phone to all the applicants. Any time of the day, you can text me because it's nice to have the right answer in real time. Thank you. Thank you both so much. I think you covered everything um, as it relates to the nuts and bolts. I appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. Can we hear from Carla with Children's? Sure. Hi. So for Children's, we are looking to post our registered nurse one positions on March 15th. So do watch out for that. There's additional information and a link I think I sent uh, that would talk about more or give you more information about the program. Um, each of the units will post their own registered nurse one position. So talking about our critical care, uh, the NICU, uh, which of course is number one in the country for four years in a row, our pediatric ICU, our ED. Under acute care, we have our surgical care unit, our medical care units, our neuroscience, GI, our psych unit, and then our hemong. So the new grads, may apply to more than one um, for each of the units, perhaps five, not all 10. Um, definitely narrow it down if you could, please. Uh, do include an updated resume, uh, a cover letter 
uh, which we read. Uh, you won't believe it, but we do read your cover letters. So anything that talks about and makes you stand out from the rest, because most of your resumes are going to look alike. But I think the cover letter gives you a little chance to truly um, convey your passion for nursing, your passion for pediatrics in specific, and um, anything that would that you've done, you know, in the past, whether it be work-wise or your own personal journey, that would set you apart. Certainly, uh, indicate that in the cover letter. If you could include any letters of recommendation, but don't let it stop you from submitting the application because you could always attach any letters, you know, after the fact, at once you've submitted it. Um, we do receive a lot of applications from all over. So the earlier you do that, in, the better. We do a panel interview all virtual. And so once you are contacted either by phone or by email, definitely check your uh, voicemails, empty them out, check your spam mailboxes and your emails. That is how our nurse managers or nurse educators will reach out to you individually. Um, it is still a panel interview, even though it's done virtually, make sure you're in a quiet room, connection is great, and you are prepared, you will meet with the nurse manager, the nurse educator, the charge nurse, um, and other you know, staff nurses. Um, look up behavioral interviewing, because that's a type of interviewing that we do. It's situational, it asks about your previous experience, how you reacted, what did you do, what was your thought process. So if you Google behavioral interviewing online, you'll see a lot of you know, questions that you could practice. Certainly practice with a friend, practice with your, um, the staff at the career services. You know, that's uh, one way to help you prepare. Um, our timelines, just to let you know, so we uh, schedule the um, posting to go up March 15. The managers will then start contacting um, and selecting you know, uh, individuals, uh, the different candidates for interview. We're hoping to extend offers in the month of May with a start date in August and September. Uh, we do our hiring twice a year. And so uh, this month of February and March is technically for those who may have graduated uh, much later August or December timeframe and the May grads would be for the fall residency. Um, it is 12 months. You will be doing a change project at the end and then hopefully transition then to, you know, to the registered nurse too. Um, if there are any individual questions that I could answer later on, then um, I'll do so. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Uh, can we hear from Anova? Thank you, Kelly. So I, I can say right off the bat that we are another uh, Vizient organization and as such it's it's pretty traditional with the regular education sessions discussion groups and and evidence based practice projects. Um, however, we um, we hire new grads all year long and then they roll into the next available um, actual residency cohort and those cohorts could be three or four times a year, depending on which hospital you're, you're talking about. The smaller hospitals don't have them four times a year, for example. Um, so it's a, kind of a, a rolling entry kind of thing as far as that goes. Um, with respect to the, the new grads, um, we, we recognize that the COVID environment and the, um, the rapid change as well as the stress of the experience of it has been very much a, a, a challenge for our new grads. And so on top of the residency, which since last July, we have been holding what we call COVID boot camp. Um, and in COVID boot camp, um, it's everything from um, uh, personal protective equipment to clinical deterioration as these patients go rapidly down the pike. Um, to uh, oxygenation me methods because we've had to do such varieties of, of, of uh, intense oxygenation and respiratory support for these people. Um, priority setting as well as uh, the management of the patient in the code. So um, the way in which we handle codes is different than we handled codes a year ago um, because of COVID. 
um, and then a, a nice good session on resilience um, uh, in that day. And so this is a special offering that has actually, we believe um, the, the measures tell us that um, it has reduced our new grads anxiety and increased their confidence uh, along the way between day one and day, um, day 90. So um, we think that that's a special offering uh, for our new grads. Um, our new grads are actually called RN Grad Fellows. <laughs> Um, and we, on our website, you'll see that we encourage our new grads to um, apply any time during that last semester and the, the sooner the better. For the recruitment pieces, I'd like to turn over to Casey Harrington, please. Hi there. Um, for our recruitment, as Kathy mentioned, we list all of our RN Grad Fellow positions as RN Grad Fellows. We have a general application for um, May graduates that I've shared um, with Kelly and Melissa. Um, and then we also take applications by specialty as well. We have started interviewing May graduates for our upcoming fellowships that are starting this summer. Typically, we start those fellowships between July and September depending on the unit and the specialty. Um, so please apply sooner rather than later. Um, we like to see a nice resume, a detailed cover letter, um, and our recruiters generally get back in pretty um, we do reach out mostly via email, so please be sure to check those inboxes, um, check your junk and your spam, and get back in touch with us about the areas of specialty that you've applied to from there uh, and set you up with the mix between virtual and in-person right now. It just depends on the facility that you're going to be interviewing for um, and the specialty as well. So if you have more detailed questions, I'd love to connect with you a little later. Thank you, Casey. Uh, can we hear from Tiffany with HCA? Hi, everyone. So our nurse residency is offered throughout the year, normally three to four cohorts. So February, July, August is our OR, and September will be our LND and mother baby. Um, we have locations all throughout Virginia. So if you're interested in Northern Virginia, great. We do have seven hospitals in the Richmond, Virginia area as well, and also four in Southwest Virginia as well. So hiring across really all specialties. The only specialties we don't hire our um, new grads into right off the bat are gonna be your pediatrics, your NICU, PICU, things like that. But for the most part, everywhere from med surge to ER, ICU, your step downs, tallies, ORs, LND, you're gonna find that really in almost every market. Um, our, our positions are posted by unit. I encourage you to apply to your top two or three choices. We really do our best to find you the right fit and the right home. So once you apply to those, which you would just go to our the facilities website that you're interested in, you can search residency or RN or whatever, it will pop up. Um, basically, you'll talk to a recruiter. It might be me or if you're applying in Richmond, it could be a different recruiter, but we'll talk to you about your, your interests and really try to find you the best fit. Um, so that'll be the first step in the process. You'll talk with us and then you'll move on to an on-site interview, which would include a director interview. There's a peer interview and several hours of shadowing. We really wanna give you the opportunity to see the unit and see the team that you're joining and make sure it's gonna be a good fit for you too. This is an interview for you as well. And we, like I said, we are hiring now across all of our markets. So if you're interested, definitely apply. If you haven't, that's really key is be one of the first to interview because um, our positions do fill relatively quickly, especially for those very popular specialties. Um, and I think that is all. I have a lot more details I can share with you guys about the residency if you're interested. So I will just talk to you one-on-one -on -one later uh, if you choose to. So looking forward to talking to you more. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, can we hear from uh, Virginia Hospital Center? So um, our whole application starts with, of course, an application submitted online. When you search on our page for the new graduate positions, you'll want to look under the new graduate nurse residency title, and then it'll have the unit. 
Um, all of our applications have an assessment that is required for completion. Um, and this is also in order to be considered. Um, and this is just a talent assessment to help us to understand how your natural talents fit in best with our organization. So just make sure you're not just clicking right through, but you're, you're taking the time to, to um, fill that out. So excuse me, once we receive those applications, um, I primarily handle new grads, but there might be one or two other recruiters who will help out as well. Um, we do encourage, um, you know, to apply to at least maybe two units, I would say it gets a little overwhelming when it's a little bit more than than that. So, and it's not to say that you couldn't be considered for any other areas that you might be interested in. If you're really open, then share that with me. I'm more than happy to consider you for whatever area you're interested in. Um, and so our program, very similar, like the others have mentioned, because we are a Vizient program, it's your 12-month structure where you meet on a monthly basis for about four hours each with core content. Um, you also, in these sessions, break out into smaller groups to just talk about some of the experiences that you're having, um, just to make it feel like you're a little less alone going through some of the things that you're going through. And I think that that's what a lot of our new grads find is very valuable um, in this program in itself. So um, then, of course, you have that evidence based project that you would need to complete um, as kind of like your graduation from from the program in itself. Um, you are also um, completing a preceptorship on your specific unit. So that in terms of how long orientation is for that, it is dependent upon the unit that you're on. Um, your preceptorship on a critical care unit might be a little bit longer. Same with like your OR and whatnot. So um, it ranges from about 10 to 12 weeks to about six months, just depending on where you're at. Um, we hire for most of our units um, with, I will say, with the exception of maybe behavioral health, that's one that we don't typically hire into. Um, like others I mentioned before, um, women and infant is a hot commodity, so you really have to get in there really quickly. Um, for us, our, um, I'll back up, I'm sorry. So we admit twice a year, um, so usually in March for any winter grads. Um, and then we also admit during July, August, and September for any spring graduates. The September entry is more of like those who might graduate in August. There are some programs that graduate a little bit off. So we hold that September start date. Um, something new that we are actually implementing this year is because there is such a gap from the time that you graduate to the time that you would start is that we are allowing anybody who's hired into a position to start with us early as a clinical technician. Um, this allows you to kind of start getting a feel for yourself on the unit, the hospital, you kind of get a head start in terms of orienting with your skills and, and whatnot. So that's definitely something that, you know, if it's if something that interests you, please let me know so that we can keep track. And once you graduate, we can get you right in. Um, and then this is, of course, while you're studying for the NCLEX and everything. Um, I think, um, I don't know if I'm forgetting, I think I went through most everything. I, I'm happy to answer any more specifics in the breakout rooms or please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, Marta. I think you answered everything. One quick question I know about VHC. I know you had an interview day already for, um, for yeah. May grads. And so just wondering if you're still hiring on all units or if the, you know some units may not be available now. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, so we actually do have match days typically ahead of when we're hiring for. So we actually just held our match, I, I should say event, it's more a couple of days, not really just one. Um, we did just hold, hold our match event a couple of weeks ago for the May. Um, we currently still have a couple areas that are open and if it's on the website, then it's open. Um, Unfortunately, our critical care areas, as well as our women infant, filled up fast, um, and so those are no longer available for the summer. Um, but check back often, you know, sometimes things change, and so, um, yes, in, we usually hold this, so we held our event in February for the summer graduate, or for the summer cohort, and then we usually do like a September-October match event for the March cohorts. 
perfect. Thank Thanks, you Kelly. so much. Uh, can we hear from Kelly with UVA Health System? All right, so nuts and bolts. Um, our nurse residency program is 12 months, um, like a lot of the others. We, of course, are meeting virtually for the most part for right now, um, but have um, opportunities to have the whole group and then also um, breakout groups, depending on the level of care that you're providing. Um, we have three summer cohorts planned for this, uh, for this year coming up. And that's based on, we have start, date, start dates through um, from July through October. Uh, your nurse residency program um, orientation, sorry, is based, uh, of course, on your level of care that you're providing as well. So for acute care, it's three months for intermediate care, four, critical care, five, and then for some of our, you know, more uh, complicated areas, the OR and um, the ED is six months. Um, and you follow along with your cohort throughout your whole first year, and then when you are done with that year and your evidence-based project, um, you graduate through that. You start out the title that we call our new grads is CLIN 1. And then once that year is, is completed and your um, project is done, you advance uh, to a CLIN 2. And with that comes a 5% increase in your hourly rate. So that's always, always exciting. And uh, one thing to mention throughout your time with us, if you stay, with UVA in a full-time nursing position throughout your first five years, you will actually accrue uh, retention bonuses along the way that, uh, that total $15,000. So that's kind of nice, um, especially a great way to maybe pay off some student loans or treat yourself to something great because you've you know, really accomplished something great and you deserve it. Um, the units that we're hiring for, we cover uh, typically about 30 to 35 departments, um, anything from general medicine, neuro, psych, mother baby, of course, um, the ICUs, oncology. Uh, we have a standalone transitional care hospital and uh, sort of one of our specialties as well as transplant. Our transplant department is fantastic. And we, I believe, are the only hospital in Virginia that can transplant every organ and every age group, so pediatric to adult, um, every organ system. So that's kind of exciting. Um, let's see, uh, how to apply is um, we have just one position for each cohort. So we're kind of wrapping up the winter cohort uh, right now with folks that are starting as late as March 22nd. That's our last start date for, um, for the December grads. And then for May, as I said, um, July through October, and so we have two separate sort of funnels, you know, pipelines for them, for anybody to apply. And then we try our best to match you. We do um, review everybody on a, you know, first applied, first reviewed basis. So um, we try to match you with your top two or three areas that you're interested in, but it really just sort of depends on your timing. So we are already interviewing and um, actually even extending some offers as of today. So that's exciting, but um, you definitely want to make sure that you get your application in. All that we ask for uh, is your resume and your cover letter. Uh, we have done away with asking for transcripts and um, letters of recommendation as well. And we, uh, once you are offered a position, we have a separate um, uh, online platform that we use to get references um, to, you know, to get all of your onboarding and all of that completed. Um, as I said, we're already interviewing, of course, that's being done virtually. So, um, shadowing might be available. It's really kind of on a department by department basis and based on their COVID, uh, levels. Um, you know, like our NICU the other day said they weren't even letting both parents back with their babies. So they weren't going to let anybody, unfortunately, come in to, to shadow. So it really just kind of depends on how all of that shakes out. Um, the only other thing to mention about our recruitment process is just to be patient. Um, I know everybody's super eager and excited and ready to hit the ground running. Um, we, like I said, we tend to hire about 140 to 150 new grads every year. Um, and so we tend to have about double of that as it, um, as it comes to uh, candidates. So we just have to 
work through it. Um, our process has been steady so far, but trying to juggle everybody's schedules, uh, especially these days is a little bit more difficult. So, um, and I'm always here to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much, Kelly. That was very helpful. Um, and can we finally hear from Annie with uh, MedStar Georgetown? Sure, thanks for, again for having me. So we also post just one application for the new graduate nurse residency program and the website will be shared with you. Um, it is new graduate nurse residency for the summer of 2021. The application is posted and has been posted for a couple of months and we're lucky enough to have quite a few applicants already and quite a few offers extended already. So certainly if you're interested, I would highly encourage you like the others um, to apply as soon as possible. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any opportunities remaining in women's health, um, but we're hiring in all other specialties, um, and we do not hire in behavioral health for new grads. But other than that, um, we're hiring in medical, surgical, ICU, IMC, OR, PACU, pediatrics, NICU. Uh, PEDS and NICU are very competitive, so if you're interested in that, um, definitely apply as soon as possible because the positions are all filling very quickly. Um, but so as soon as we receive your application, we'll ask you a few questions about your area of interest, APA, practicum, all those kinds of details. And then like the others, we will match you with opportunities. Uh, we do have a virtual interview process right now, coupled with a virtual information session, which is live, um, which is a great way for you to get to know us a little bit better and us to get to know you a little bit better. Um, and the interviews take place not just with the managers, but educators as well, experienced staff nurses. We take you out on the unit virtually, share videos, pictures. Um, so even though you can't be with us in person um, right now because of the COVID environment, we do try to make it as sort of representative of our culture as possible. So hopefully um, you'll take a look at us. Um, and then we uh, will fill all the positions once they're filled, again, filling quickly. So highly recommend that you apply um, sooner rather than later. Um, and I think just to encourage you to attach a cover letter as others have to, I think that's really what helps you to set yourself apart. It's kind of the why of your resume. Um, but the cover letter and resume are all that are required for our initial application and we'll collect references and transcripts at a later date. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm one of the primary recruiters for our residency program. Happy to answer any questions and happy to be in the breakout room with you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Annie. So at this point, we have heard from each of the recruiters about the nuts and bolts of each of the, their respective hospitals nurse residency and or RN new grad opportunities. So at this point, we can't hear from all recruiters on everything. Um, so we'll just kind of be popcorn in terms of recruiters that want to jump in. But let's start off first just talking a little bit more about what makes an applicant stand out, specifically with the resume and cover letter. So any specific tips and tricks you have in terms of tailoring your resume, as well as crafting a compelling cover letter. Um, at this point, um, you're welcome to recruiters raise your hand. Um, and then I'll call on you and you can come off mute. All right, uh, we'll start with Kelly. Great, um, so I would just say, I'm, I'm gonna be very honest, I'm a little bit of a sucker for a story, but um, so not everyone may feel this way, but I think that um, you, know, you should make your cover letter memorable and personal. Um, I read one the other day that I promise I'm probably never gonna forget this. Um, girl who said she used like from the age of five she's wanted to be a pediatric nurse and she used to carry around a little um, first aid kit that had a little pair of scissors in case somebody had a baby and she needed to help cut the umbilical cord and I just thought that was so sweet and so um, you know just such a great story for for um, someone to read on the other side of it and uh, makes it very memorable um, as far as including uh, any kind of um, pos previous positions that aren't necessarily medical, I would say that can be helpful as long as it tells a good story too. You know, if you've had a job here for two months and then here for three months and, um, you know, it doesn't really add much value, then I would say there's no need to 
add that to it. But if it shows, you know, even if you were babysitting or working in some sort of capacity where you were um, caring for others or, you know, showing that sort of compassion that, um, that they're looking for, I think that would be super helpful. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. I see Stephanie's hand. Um, so um, as far as uh, GW is concerned, um, what really makes a resume stand out is, of course, if you already have um, hospital experience, um, if you're, you know, if you're looking to work in critical care, um, definitely highlight that your either your practicum or your preceptorship or your capstone um, was in one of those units. Um, I will say for the ICU, they really only like to hire um, new grads or not only hire, but they take um, they prioritize new grads that have had their um, preceptorship in the ICU um, and um, for, for the NICU, kind of the same thing. Um, I would highlight if you have any experience, um, you know, working with children, if you are a babysitter, um, any volunteer opportunities that you've done will really help you stand out. Um, I also think um, if you've had previous jobs related with, um, related to, with customer service, that would um, be really well. Anything that can highlight um, your leadership your leadership skills um, is really good. Um, and then also I do wanna mention as well, if you have um, in the past, if you worked as an ED tech, uh, a military medic, um, you will receive 50% um, credit um, to, towards your pay for that as well. So we'll, we'll um, take that into account. Um, Jerry, do you have anything you wanna add as well? Uh, nope, you said everything that uh, we need to. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. And mm -hmm. finally, let's hear from Casey at Anova. Hey there. Um, I just wanted to say that as a recruiter, and I know that hiring managers are always interested in seeing resumes that are specifically tailored to the hospital and the unit that you are applying to. Um, so I would say include an objective at the top of your resume there saying that you're interested in working for X unit at X hospital. And then on your um, cover letter, really highlight why and your passion and um, make yourself stand out there. And uh, Kim at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. So I want to agree with everything that all of the recruiters have also said, but I just want to add a couple of things. Um, you know, you really need to be careful when you're completing your cover letter um, that you're not identifying the one and only hospital perhaps that you want to work at, because um, if you've applied to multiple hospitals throughout the area, obviously, if you've applied for Hopkins or you've applied for Inova or you've applied for Virginia Hospital Center and you've submitted your same cover letter to the Washington Hospital Center, then that's going to sort of blaze out as far as attention to detail and kind of really where you want to be. So obviously it's really important to indicate a little bit about you personally, but it's also very important that with each application you're submitting, you're really crafting and you're looking very carefully um, at your cover letter um, just to ensure that it is not only um, personal towards you but also um, indicative of, of the reason that you wanna work at whatever specific hospital it is. And if you're not sure, which is why you're interviewing and the world is your oyster, because you guys are nurses, um, then just at least make sure you, you know, change the hospital and the environment that you're looking for. Sometimes I also caution you about being too um, specific, uh, particularly if it's a highly um, competitive environment because again, if there's not that position available, but you do want to work at the specific institution, and so if the ED is not available, but you're interested in the ICU, and you've only indicated that the ED is your passion, then when the ICU has the opportunity to look at the application, they'll be a little bit leery because you've indicated that the only place that you've always wanted to work is the ED. So again, um, you know, you just have to make sure that you're crafting each application um, and cover letter uh, very specifically to your interest. And so you can always say where you ultimately wanna work 
or the areas that you've had most success and you felt like you found your place when you were in nursing school. Um, so it's almost a little bit of um, being specific, but at the same time, you know, making sure that you're indicating that you're a very adaptable uh, person as well. Thank you, Kim. So obviously we can't hear from everyone, but if you do have very specific questions uh, for recruiters later about resumes and cover letters, some good things to potentially ask because every hospital looks for something a little bit different. Do you wanna see all my clinical rotations or do you just wanna see the ones tailored to the particular unit that you're applying for? One page is one page versus two. All hospitals are a little different. So those are some of the key things that you could ask the individual recruiters in some of the breakout sessions. So we're going to move on from resumes and cover letters and how students stand out. And I know I'm being cognizant of time. Some of um, you went went into detail about your interview process, especially the interview process now due to the pandemic. Um, but if there's anybody that wants to add any bit um, any more about their particular interview process, now is the time we can talk about that, as well as any tips and tricks um, in order to prepare for interviews. Who would like to start? I see Tiffany's hand. I'll just say something. I would just say in the interview, just being really honest with what it is that you're interested in. The, the directors can tell immediately if you're there for a med surge interview, but you really wanted ER, they're going to know that. So just be honest with yourself when you're going on these interviews. Like if you know that med surge isn't really where you want to be or ICU isn't really where you want to be, it's really like ED that you want or LND that you really want or if it's med surge that you really want, um, I personally would just say pursue those opportunities because you'll be happier. They're looking for longevity um, and there's lots of opportunities out there, so. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, can we hear from Mary Jane? Uh, one, one idea that I have for all of you is we are so incredibly fortunate and blessed to have so many different hospitals that you've gotten to hear about um, across the DMV area. So my, my thought to all new nurses that I say is do take a pause and look at your own personal um, mission. What does nursing mean to you? And then go find that hospital that has a very similar um, mission and a goal. Because if you align those two together, that you will have that longer longevity um, and you will hopefully um, be happier in the in the hospital and in the unit that you are working with because uh, we do have so many different hospitals um, in the area so that's something i always encourage people to do sorry uh we'll hear from marta I wholeheartedly agree with Mary Jane and what she just said. That was partially what I was going to say. One of the other things that I usually also like to tell um, or kind of advise new grads is that treat your first conversation with your recruiters as an interview. Um, I feel like a lot of the time I have reached out to a lot of new grads and sometimes they're not as prepared and whatnot. So I think, you know, there, there's a reason why you're applying to this position, to this hospital. So be prepared with that information when we reach out to you. Um, and um, that being said, um, our interview process, I don't think that I mentioned it, is all virtual at the moment. Um, it's very um, individualized in terms of whether or not the hiring managers might invite you to do a shadow opportunity that might just be an event where they might want you to get a better feel for the unit we're not typically doing it but it's a it's a good thing if they are inviting you in for a shadow so um, making yourself available for that definitely and taking up on the process we also do peer interviews. And I think somebody mentioned it before too. This is an interview for both sides. This is whether to see if the unit or our hospital would be a good culture fit for you. And likewise, they're seeing the same thing. So, um, you know, be prepared to meet with several people along the way. 
Thank you so much. Uh, any other recruiters want to chime in on interviews? I see David's hand. Marta kind of stole mine, but the other big thing I, uh, I always tell new grads is um, just perfect your elevator speech. Uh, I don't know if you guys teach elevator speeches at GW or not, but um, almost every interview starts with just tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, and it's like you always know first impressions are key. So if you can crush that elevator speech, which is just a quick, you know, one minute um, starter on yourself. I feel like a lot of new grads either start from age four and have a 20 minute monologue until they get to age 21 where they are now. Or you have those that say their name and DMV and, and that they're graduating in May and then it's silence. So um, there's not a lot of in between where you give kind of, you know, a little bit about yourself or, or share that little story from your cover story, um, you know, cover. So I'd say just, you know, master an elevator speech is something super quick and easy to do. Um, it'll help you not only in interviews, but also once you start, you know, and networking with other directors or if you do want to get to that new area, again, you meet them in the elevator. Hi, my name is you knock it out. Um, so that would be my advice is just crush that elevator speech because uh, every interview is going to start with tell me a little bit about yourself. So if you struggle with the first question, sorry about your luck. <laughs> so I'd say, uh, I'd say, you know, get that down. It's pretty easy to do. If you need any help with it, you know, let me know. I can even do that over an email. I can give you a template or something. It's pretty easy. So that's my advice. Thank you, David. Um, and we'll hear from Stephanie and then we'll transition to uh, your question students. So get ready. Um, I would say as far as our interview process, um, I just think that, um, you know, really think about, you know, why you really want to work for GW, um, what, what's motivating you to be a nurse. Um, and then also we, as what others had said too, we'll do an interview, um, with the hiring manager. And then sometimes depending upon the unit, um, they will want to do either a shadow shift or um, a peer interview. I know um, our oncology unit likes to do um, peer interviews and our ED and our ICU um, typically like to do uh, shadow interviews as well or shadow days as well. Um, for our ICU, usually the educator will reach out and do a phone screen. And then after that, they'll decide who they want to bring in or not bring in, but have um, a formal interview with, with the hiring manager. Um, depending upon the unit, some have been virtual, some have been in the hospital. Um, it just really depends on the comfort level of the hiring manager. Um, for the NICU, um, I will say because she it, their unit is um, one of the most competitive and they only typically hire um, two to four new grads per class. Um, if you don't have all of your um, application documents, um, I won't send your resume until I have them all completed. So if that really interests you, make sure that you have your transcript and your two letters of recommendation available um, at the time of your, when you submit your application. Um, she likes to gather all of the applications and then review them. She reads through um, all of your letters of recommendation and your transcripts. Um, and then she'll contact me as to who she's going to be bringing in for an interview. Um, and I would just say, just be yourself, show your personality, um, and that'll that'll get you through. Thank you so much, Stephanie. So I'm uh, being conscious of time. So we will take like two questions from students uh, during the open session, and then we'll do breakouts where you can get some of your individual questions answered. But if you can just raise your hand using the hand icon, uh, we'll have time for like two questions. Um, I see Deborah's hand. Hello, everyone. Um, so my question is this, now we're doing our preceptorship in school and from what I've been hearing, it seems like we can only get into the units that we did a preceptorship in. Is that true? Or is it possible to get into another unit that's not from our senior practicum? Thank you. I think you're on mute, Kelly. 
I think I could add a, a, a point that I know from my perspective, I'm aware that not everyone in the DMV is able to get a, a preceptorship or, or, or a capstone project or whatever it is for the semester. Especially in these COVID times, it's been difficult to place students. Um, some hospitals have struggled with PPE and the end result has been that haven't been able to place them in all the areas they would normally want to place them. And so I think it's very important for, for you to realize that we're, we're very aware of all of this right now and that I, I don't think that we hold it against people. Yeah, it's wonderful if you have it and, and it's in the right direction, but it's, it's, it's a different time right now. And I think I, I, think I could probably, I see some heads nodding in the fellow recruiters and I, and I, and I think that you know, we, we all recognize it's just a unique time. Thank you, Kathy. Um, for time purposes, I'm going to take two more questions. I see Megan's hand and then Steve's hand. So we'll take two more student questions and then we'll wrap up. So Megan, go right ahead. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, I'm really excited to hear all of the ways that you guys are investing in students. And I was also just curious to hear about anything with continued education and opportunities with that. Thanks. So let's hear from maybe um, two to three recruiters on this. This is Annie. Can I pop in from Georgetown? Yes, please. Um, we, we offer $6,000 of educational assistance per calendar year, which you can begin using after the first year. During the residency program, you have so many classes and different, um, different types of events that it's difficult to use it during that time. But really, once you get to the 12-month mark is when you can begin using it. We have so many classes as an academic institution, uh, both clinical classes and opportunities and non-clinical ones. Really interesting one coming up about mindfulness-based stress reduction, yoga classes, and all sorts of different things. Um, wellness is super important to us um, throughout all of my care here and also at Mr. Washington Hospital. Center. But definitely you can use the educational assistance for conferences, for certification, prep course exams, to go back to school. You'll get lots of support for that at MedStar Georgetown. Uh, we just want you to be really thoughtful about um, you know, advancing your career and, and we provide you with lots of assistance and um, lots of advice if you want it about when it's the right time to do that. Thanks. Thank you, Annie. So we'll hear from Marta, Stephanie, and then Casey very quickly and then we'll transition to Steve's question. Hi, so real quick, Virginia Hospital Center actually offers um, each year or a semester that you're qual qualified for $5,000 up to $5,000 per year. And then on top of that, we do offer an additional $5,000 in a scholarship that you would apply for. So you have the potential of receiving up to $10,000 a year. On top of that, you actually, all of the nurses also get a, I think it, right now it might be 250 credit to use toward any kind of certification, CEUs, and things like that. Thank you, Marta. We'll hear from Casey. So here at ANOVA, you will qualify for um, $5,250 per year in tuition reimbursement or educational assistance. Um, you can qualify for that after 90 days of satisfactory employment with us. And um, you can use that towards a degree. If you wanted to pursue an MSN, you can use it towards certifications, a whole host of things. Um, if you get a certification that's relevant to your role and the unit that you're on, you will also get um, a certification bonus that's 2% of your base salary. You can qualify for up to one of those per year. So we highly encourage continuing education for all of our, um, all of our nurses and team members across the board. And I would add that there are scholarships. We just awarded $160,000 worth of them just this last month. Um, and that uh, those scholarships are up to $8,500 each that that's in to handle some of your tax consequence, frankly. Um, and also um, we do have a generous foundation that enables us to be able to provide a, a good deal of continuing education outside the organization. Thank you. And Stephanie. Um, for GW, um, we have a couple of options. One, um, we'll give you $500 every year um, for certifications. 
Um, if you get a advanced certification that's approved by um, GW, we will, after your first year, we'll give you actually $1,000 per year that that um, certification is active. Um, if you decide to go back to school for continuing education, we'll give you um, uh, 3000 for full time, we'll give you $3,000 a year for that um, part time, it's $1,500. Um, and then a third option is if you go back to school at GW um, and apply to our signature program, we will give you full tuition. So it's um, a really good opportunity to have your school paid for. So that's yeah, that's a little bit about what we do. Thank you, Stephanie. And any other hospitals that want to provide information, thank you, Kim, for putting it in the chat. Feel free to do that. That's a great way to continue to provide details to students. So finally, we will hear from Steve, and then I'll tell you more about the breakouts. Uh, I was actually just going to piggyback on something Deborah said, but Kathy had answered it. Um, but I guess since we're on the topic of continuing ed education and certification, I'm just curious. Um, so for critical care and for um, like pediatrics, I know there's like the PALS, the ACLS. Um, I know that some typically will take that within the time frame of graduating when they take the NCLEX and pass and then up until the point where they start working. Um, is there like a way to, I know most hospitals will typically pay for those certifications, but is there a way to kind of take them first and then kind of defer the payment until after getting hired? Because I know sometimes you have to get those um, sponsored by anyways. I don't know if that's like the right way to ask that, but. Um. Well, some of those are actually um, not encouraged to take right away because they would like you to have some experience and also some coursework be, uh, before you get to ACLS and PALS. So we have sort of a, a, a guideline that says that um, within six months of hire, we would like to see that achieved, but, but that a variety of factors, including the nurse, the organization, the unit, all play into pl the, the consideration um, as to when you actually uh, go for that. But generally speaking, we don't do the ACLS um, early in the, in the process. Thank you, Kathy. Any additional um, information for Steve from recruiters that may be different from what Kathy said? I can say something. Okay, go uh, ahead. Okay, so um, from a hospital center perspective, um, as part of your onboarding, you have to have um, an active BLS um, certification. So if it's expired, um, it's on you um, to make sure that it becomes active or that you've recertified before your actual start date. Um, ACLS, we certainly accept if you're a go-getter and you've taken the class, that's great. It's certainly not required. Same thing as Kathy mentioned in our critical care areas, in our ED areas, in our MedStar heart and vascular areas, it is required after six months. And we do have um, CITEL, which is sort of our intranet, um, and you can certainly apply and sign up for BLS as well as ACLS as well as PALS um, after you're an active internal associate, and that will be um, taken care of for you at that point in time financially. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kim. And so um, at this point, we are going to transition to our breakout rooms, but before we do, I just want to personally thank all of the recruiters as well as additional hospital um, staff that are here with us this evening. We so appreciate your time and the information that you shared. I, I certainly found it valuable and, and I know our students did too. Bye guys, thank you so much for coming. And again, remember to complete the survey. Thank you, Thank you so much. much.